we don't have a pep rally. I don't have no problem having a pep rally for the Lord. They do it at school and all football teams and basketball teams and I'm about a, about a different team. It's called the Jesus team. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's God's army's team. In Jesus' name. Now, we are going to do something that we have not. You can be seated for a moment. Before we get to the preaching, I need, I need, who's here? Let's see. I need, Brother Peter already gave me his. They're not here. They're not here. He's going to give me that later. They're not here. Susie, where's Susie? Susie, you have those three tickets? Is she getting back to you? Okay. So she's done. I'm turning mine in. Mark's going to... Okay. We're good. We'll get all those taken care of. We're going to do... Some, huh? Not yet. We're going to do communion. We're going to do something that we haven't done in a while. Uh, we've actually done only communion maybe once a year. If that, we did once every two years at one point. And there was a reason for that. This church was not ready to do communion on a regular basis, in my opinion. Uh, communion is a very serious deal. The Bible says that we got to be careful when we take communion, that we take it worthily. Now that doesn't mean that you're worthy, because none of us are worthy. Uh, the only reason why we are saved is by His grace and His mercy. But it means to have the right attitude and the right behavior in your life. That's something we can control. We can control whether we sin or not. I know there's a, a huge misconception in, in the public eye that sin just pops on you every once in a while or just happens. And that's a lie from the devil from the depths of hell. Because if you decide that you want to repent, you know how I know that's true that you can do that? Because God says he's not a liar. And God said, if you repent, I will forgive you of that sin. If you'll get baptized, I'll wash you of that sin. And if you get the Holy Ghost, I'll give you a choice. Whether you're going to sin or not. Praise God. So today we have a choice. So when it says come to him worthily, we're not talking about being good enough. We're talking about being repented. Being repented. So I want all of us to stand right now. We're going to do a prayer of repentance in this place. And you should not take communion if you're not repentant. I'm just saying that because the Bible says that we need to be serious about living for God. This is not a game, church. We're getting way too close to the end to be playing games with God. And I've just made a decision that in my life and in my family's life, when it comes to us, we're going to live for the Lord. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So I'm going to try to get as many people as possible to follow the same attitude so that we can have a big old party in heaven instead of have just a few of us. We can have a lot of us be there ready to party with the Lord. Praise God. So we're going to do a, uh, number one, we're going to do, we just did communion in April. And I understand that. We did it for Easter and that's normal. But what Mark and I have talked about is doing communion on uh, the first Sunday of the quarter. And that happens to be today, even though we just did it a few months, a few weeks ago. Uh, this is the first Sunday of the quarter. And from now, every three, every three months, every quarter, we're going to do communion. So one of the reasons why I didn't do communion, not only was that the church didn't think was ready, but now that we're more ready, the other issue is, is that in my, in my past teachings, they talked about communion being about death and focusing on the death. And one of the things I appreciate about Mark is that both of us are teachable. There are things that I've taught Mark and there's things that he's taught me. And this is one of them. My whole life, I always thought that they focused on the death when it came to communion. And so whenever someone tells me something that might not be what I think it is, I said, well, show me the word. Because I'm not interested in your opinion. I don't care who you are. No offense, but that's what I'm going to say to you. If you bring me something and say, well, this is how things should be, I'm going to say, bring me the word. And I'll read it, and I'll look at it, and this is proof. This is proof that I will listen or read the word, because when I read the study on communion that he gave me, it talked about in several places that communion was about life. Amen. Communion was about life, and it was about, it was about maintaining your focus. Let me tell you something. I'm not preaching yet, so this is not, don't count my time. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you the Lord puts a pastor in front of the church for a reason. What I'm going to tell you is not because I'm prophetic and, and because I can read your minds and, or the Lord spoke to me. This is not, I just know what I see. 
I'm going to tell you what one of the problems in our church is and one of the things that we struggle with is not repentance. Why? Because it's taught consistently and you do it consistently. Amen. But now that we're not a baby church anymore, now that we're a, a young church and we're growing, the next step going from crawling to walking is not, oh come on, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's not just to repent. That's the first step. That's crawling. The next level is to maintain your repentance, to hold on to it, to say I'm not letting go. I'm going to repent and I'm going to hold on to God and let go of my sin because I don't want to die. I want to live. I feel the Holy Ghost. Ah, <laughs> I am so glad that I'm walking, standing in front of a bunch of people who agree. Amen. But it's easy to agree. It's harder to walk in it. Right. So what we want to do at New Hope Church is give you a little help. And, and, and this is part of it. This is part of communion is a reminder. Who I'm taking in. Whose blood do I have on my soul as a result of my baptism? And if you've not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, then you need to come see me so we can put you in the waters of baptism and let your soul be drenched in the blood of Jesus so that blood of Jesus can be applied and wash away all of your sin. What a miracle. We just had that happen with Brother Bobby. Felt good, didn't it? Oh, Brother Bobby just went down in the water. Who else did? Oh, Regina's not here, but she went down. Praise God. I see changes in these people's lives. So the idea is that we want to help let this uh, uh, more frequent communion be something that both puts us in the focus of life, what he did for us, where we need to be, maintaining a renewed life, renewed repentance, and maintaining, and listen, between this, between this communion and the next, the goal is for you not to sin. Come on. Period. Yeah. Fight it with every. Come on. <laughs> Until what? Until what? what? Until what? Until blood resist sin unto blood, fighting with everything you have to say, I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah. It doesn't belong in my life. When I say, when I think of resist sin unto blood, I think about squeezing your hands so tight, holding on to God so tight that you be, and I'm not telling you to cut yourself. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just telling you, I have a, I have a good imagination. I'm telling you what I see is that holding on so much that you'd rather hold on and bleed than to let go. Come on, I'm giving you, a, I'm giving you a mindset. I'd rather hold on even if I have to bleed. Praise God, we're going to do a, 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 a prayer of repentance right now. If you'd all close your eyes. If you want, you can bow your heads. You can raise your hands. You can put your hands behind your back. Your body position really is not that relevant. What's relevant is your mind and your heart. Because those are going to lead your actions. God, today, right now, as a collective body, we involve ourselves in corporate prayer of repentance. Repentance means to turn from sin, to do a 180, to do an about face. I'm going to get away. I'm going to run. I'm going to be terrified. I'm going to flee from sin. I'm going to resist sin, and the devil will flee from me. I'm going to give it my all, God. I'm not just going to say, I'll try. I'll try. It's a way of already failing but I'm going to say God I'm going to give it my all to remove and keep the sin out of my life not just right here today but tomorrow and the next day I'm going to get up every morning and say today God I am not going to sin yes just keep praying for a minute just keep, soak it in we're serious God we're serious God we're serious, God. We're serious. Ababa shata la mandi osobo salabaj. Kalalashiata. Right now, everybody in this place, prayer of repentance, deep, not not shallows, but deep in the Lord, deep with the Lord. Right now, He is so merciful 
that no matter how bad you've been, no matter how big your mistakes, uh, he is going to forgive you. He is going to forgive you. He is going to cleanse you if you'll let him. If you'll obey him and submit to him, he will do it. If you'll do what he said to do, he'll do what he said he is going to do. And you, somebody clap. Somebody shout. Thank God that you have somebody you can repent to. Thank God you have someone who's real, who hears you, and will forgive you in Jesus' name. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. What we're going to do now is... A Brother, if you come down, we're going to have you... I'm going to let you guys do it. We're going to have you come down in rows, starting with this side, and then we'll go this side. How did we do it last time, brother? Right, take it back. But do we just have them all come like they did last time? Yeah, just come down like the offering march. Go in. Now remember, if you did a prayer of repentance and you were serious, you should take communion. If you're just not, listen, don't be, you don't have to be ashamed if you're just not there yet. Don't take communion to, to impress us because you're not impressing anybody. We're not here to be impressed. Just keep working until you're ready. If you're not ready, no one's going to look at you in your seat and go, oh, I can't believe they didn't pick up communion. If you're not ready, don't do it. It's okay. But if you've repented and you are ready to just say, God, it's from now and forever. I'm giving my life to you as a lifetime decision. Then go ahead and take communion. But meet it. Let it go sink to your heart as you take the bread and the blood of Jesus Christ. Why don't you just go ahead and come down like communion. Go to the wall. Come to the front like you do for offering as we take communion today. Yeah, take it back to your seat and then we're going to take it all together. Someone will be around to collect your bottles after you drink the juice. Praise God. Praise God. Touch the church, Lord. Touch the church, Lord. Touch the church, Lord. Jesus, we thank you, God. You are awesome, God. You are worthy, God. We just thank you for your mercy today. You are so good. Thank you for the opportunity to be in this church today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> oh, you are so good. Bless everybody in this house, God. Touch everybody in this house. Oh, yes, Jesus. I thank you for those that are willing to follow your word, to follow your ordinances. Thank you, Lord, for all those that are participating. Thank you for those that are not. We thank you for everyone who is here today with us. Oh, Jesus, we're so grateful that you love all of us equally, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
just take a moment to just close your eyes and pray. Take a moment to understand what you're doing. Take a moment that you've ingested the blood and body of Christ. Oh, it may be a symbolism, but it's a symbol I want to maintain. My God, I take this serious today, Lord, that I've taken you in. Oh, I've taken you in, God. You're going to be my God, and I'm going to surrender. I'm going to submit, God. I take you into my body. I take your word into my body as I've done this bread and this and this wine or this juice, God. Oh, Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Oh, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And that's what we're doing right now. We're lifting him up. Oh, praise God. We're lifting him up with a seriousness and an understanding. This isn't, this isn't just cheap grace and easy believism. This is his body and his blood. Praise. 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 Oh, let's just take let's just take another moment as we oh Jesus oh Jesus enjoy his presence praise God praise God hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> praise God praise God oh Jesus you are worthy, God. Yes, Jesus. Brother Elias. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Somebody clap onto the Lord. Somebody just give him all kinds of gratitude. All kinds of gratitude. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sunday school may now be dismissed. Can you hear me okay? I'm going to need some more. I'm going to have to take this mic back and have a look at because it's not working good. You're going to have to just watch out, Elias. It's going to go up and down. I prefer to use this because I'm Italian like Eric. i gotta, I got to use my hands when I'm preaching. So just kind of keep an eye on it and probably need to turn me up right there. Right there. If you don't hear me that loud, just keep messing with it until I am. Praise God. If not, I'll have to use this. Sunday school may not be dismissed. All you youngsters, be good to your Sunday school teacher and, and helpers. Praise God. Uh, boy, that way. Uh, you Sunday school, homie. Go. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get him to go with you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, babe. Somebody will get him. Praise the Lord. Yeah, this will be our next preacher, brother. Praise the Lord, son. Go ahead. Handle it. Thank you, Jesus. We are finally, if everybody would stand, we are finally going to be able to continue oh, 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 oh whoosh, praise God thank you brother man I almost got in trouble I've, I've told brother Eric that I want to preach it every week 
Uh, and that would include this week. So, Brother Eric, if you come up. No, uh, thank you for reminding me. I'm about to go on, brother. Why don't we welcome our brother to the platform? Go back and sit down, brother. That's not a welcome. Uh, that's not a welcome. Somebody welcome. My, okay. That, that, all right. Praise God. That's, that's a little Let's better. Let's give that all to God. Let's give it to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Can we give that to God for a moment or two? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He has delivered us from so much. Amen. While you're standing real quick, I'm going to go to the book of James 2, 17, and then verse 26. If you can grab your Bibles real quick. Book of James, chapter 2, verse 17, and also verse 26. If you don't have it, say praise God. And if you do have it, say praise God. Praise God. That way we don't know who does or doesn't have it. <laughs> it says, Even so faith... If it hath not works, it's dead, being alone. And then verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, faith without works is dead also. Can we take a moment and pray to our God and ask him to help us with this next little bit on his word? God, we just love you, Lord. God, we're thankful, God, for all you've done for us, God, Lord. And open our eyes, God. Hallelujah. Come on, don't be shy to your God. Hallelujah. God, we ask for your help, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Just give you the praise and glory, God. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you. So I want to read that again. It says, on verse 17, it says, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Or, you could say, faith, being alone, is dead. So in other words, it's telling us that it takes more than faith to be alive in Christ. For faith is belief that is not based on proof. That's one of the definitions I looked up and saw on faith. Faith, belief that is not based on proof. So let me see here. Try something new here. Let's see. Let's see. I don't. I never sat here before. Oh, I didn't fall. Wow. Wow. That was cool. <laughs> I never sat in that chair, but I. I've seen chairs before and I know they work. And, that, and uh, there's chairs here, so there must be some back here, huh? Just kidding. Just kidding. I, guess, I guess there's no chairs back there, huh? Man, I guess i got to look where I'm going. Where am I going? Just kidding. All right. Uh, I understand what the structure of a sturdy chair looks like. Just before, the, just before I had faith in the Holy Ghost, I, I was a foul-mouthed individual. I uh, smoked. Smoked a lot, drank a lot, did a lot of drugs. I was hopeless and alone. But, uh, but that was before faith. And then uh, August 19, 2001, actually June 28, 2001, I got baptized in Jesus' name. And then August 19, 2001, that same year, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and that was all left behind. And I started uh, looking into the Word of God and getting faith. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Sorry. I'm trying to go, uh, see. Before I have faith, I must understand in whom I have faith in right. and in what I have faith in. Right. The whom is Jesus Christ and the what is in the Word of God, the Bible. I had faith in that chair because I've seen that chair, other chairs like it, and I know that they've sat and looked like the right structure. So I sat in that chair. I have faith in the Word of God because I, on this day, June 1st, 2014, because I was here last week, May 23rd or 24th, 25th, 2014, and it was the same word that was being preached, same repentance, same baptism in Jesus' name, same Holy Ghost that's available to all who do not have it, and that will save you from your sins, and it's the same faith that I take with me each week and every day. Amen. That, that falling on the floor episode, that was basically like saying that if, if, if I followed everybody to church every week, but I didn't read my Bible and I didn't pray and I didn't really believe in what was being said. I just followed you guys. When you guys stood up and I stood up. If you guys went to the front, I went to the front. If I did that without faith, or if, without any faith, would there be any validity in it? Would there be any, would there be any proof in, in my relationship with God? No. There would not be. So faith by itself is dead. It's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's like not looking and falling down. I have to look into the Word of God. 
Then believe or have faith in it and follow or work his plans, which is repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost, which is being saved, which is the results of my faith. Uh, if I have faith in the Word of God, but never open it, am I saved? Am I saved? Amen. Sorry, kind of dark up here. I can't see these little... My handwriting sometimes. Uh, if I repent and get baptized in Jesus' name, and feel, will I be able to get filled with the Holy Ghost? If I do a work, a work of repenting and being baptized, but I lack faith, will I get the Holy Ghost? No. no? I, have to, I have to have both of them. Let me, let me go to the book of... Uh, let, me, let me show you something here in John 20. There was one of the apostles, I'm sorry, disciples uh, of Jesus' that, that lacked some. John 20, verse uh, 24 to 29, it says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. This is after, sorry, me. This is after Jesus' resurrection when he came to his disciples to show them and teach them more. Let me start over. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The, the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand at his side, I will not believe. In other words, he wanted some work done to believe. And after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst of them, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believe in. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Faith, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they, look at your neighbor, say, Blessed are you, blessed are you, that have not seen and yet believe. Jesus was activating Thomas' faith he, by saying, do it. You know, we have that other, that other shoe people that say that. Just do it. Jesus said that first, so he was rigid, the, the original Nike guy. But no, Jesus was activating Thomas' faith by saying, just do it. You know, he said, here, do it. Put your hand on my side, you know, where you got struck at, and put your hands in my nails. Do it. Uh, Jesus activated my faith, like I said, on uh, August 19, 2001, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. How? How? What's the result of that? I am sober-minded. I am sober-mouthed. I am alive in Christ. I get to know each and every one of you, which is a blessing. I'm married to the most wonderful woman in the world for me. And I'm active in church, which means I'm active in my faith. I'm working in church. You can't have faith without works, uh, James was telling us. You have to have both. And how do you show your faith is by your works what you do. Not everybody can do what I do, and not everybody can do what you do. Because you know people that I don't know, and I know people that you don't know. So, we are all ministers on location, wherever we're at. Before I have faith, I must understand in whom I have faith, and what I have faith in. Faith is like having a job. I can say I have a job. Come Monday, I say, hey, Sister White, I got a job here at Taco Bell. Come next Tuesday, I say, hey, Tiffany, I got a job here at Taco Bell. Come next Thursday, I say, hey, Starla, I got a job here at Taco Bell. Well, you know what? If I'm not going to work, do you think I'm going to have a job? Am I going to get paid? I can talk all I want, but, you know, it's not going to last forever. So I have to have uh, a job and work at that job to, to get paid. Jesus, want us to, Jesus does not want us to be unemployed in our faith. He came and specifically made it to Thomas so he could continue in his faith. Because Thomas was doubting, and we all know doubting Thomas. Remember, the definition of faith Believe uh, is, fi fi sorry, faith. The definition is belief that is not based on proof. In 1 John 5, 1 through 3, it says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth him, also is begotten of him. In other words, if you love your brother or sister that was born of God, that's what it's saying right there. By this know ye that we have the... Uh, that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. I don't know. Sometimes it's grievous for me loving that man back there. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, but Jesus did throw that in. Or uh, uh, the, the word of God 
though that it is there for us to, to, to know that it's not grievous to love our brother and sister. Our faith in our God is based or founded upon my love to my God. Faith without works is dead. Here's our works or start of our works. It says, so whosoever believeth or has faith that Jesus is the Christ or Savior is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that's your works. So you have to have faith, you have to believe in Jesus, that he's our Savior, and you have to love the person next to you. That's our works. That's, that's, this is just one definition of works. This is not all of them. Just, just, just letting you know that. And uh, I, I was reading this morning, God was just spending a long time with me, because I was really going to speak on something else, and he just changed, changed it early this morning, so I was just having a good time with God. It was really cool, and I, was, I love looking up uh, Scripture and the Strong's Concordance and seeing what like, the Greek and Hebrew definition is to get the true, accurate meaning. And uh, I, I, this is pretty cool. In John 13, 34 to 35, Jesus, this is Jesus speaking to us. It says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. And I looked up that word commandment, and it's a, in the Greek, it, it, it means prescription. So our, our great chief and physician, Jesus Christ, was giving us a prescription to how to do works, is, is to love one another. So here's our proof to one another. And, and that word that you love one another uh, is referring to be a friend. And if we go into uh, Ephesians 4, 1 and 2, it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation or the invitation or calling herewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering or patience, forbearing, putting up with one another in love. Why? Because in Colossians 3, 13, he says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So work at it. Be a friend. Sometimes I may not, I may not know you guys, if, you know, hanging out, you know, we live so far away. And sometimes it takes work because I'm not perfect. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not perfect. And, and I know I have a lot of flaws. And, and I hope you guys love me through my flaws. And, and just as Christ forgave you, you forget, you'll forgive me. And that. But that's just a, a one way of trying to work your faith, activate your faith into what? Uh, having that combo of, of faith and works. So could we all stand maybe? Or could we all stand and, and just ask God that, to help me activate my faith? Yeah. To help me love myself as you love me, God? And then I can love others? Which is